Detroit, 1908. Henry Ford, maverick, visionary, obsessive. A man with a bad reputation. Recently let go by the company that will soon become Cadillac, he launches his third attempt to build cars. But these will be different. There are only 8,000 cars in the US. Expensive toys for the wealthy, like owning a private jet today. There were dozens and dozens of small companies building cars that were essentially playthings for the rich. They were notoriously unreliable. They were um, not standardized. They were hand-built, essentially. And if you were going to own a car, you practically had to have your own mechanic on staff as well to keep the thing running. Nobody's figured out how to make a car that's affordable and low cost. Henry Ford is about to change that. It won't just change how cars are made. It will change how everything is made. Detroit, 1913. Henry Ford isn't just making a revolutionary car. He's making it in a revolutionary way. The production line. High volume, low cost. Products identical. The man who places the part doesn't fasten it. The man who puts in a bolt doesn't put on the nut. And the man who puts on the nut doesn't tighten it. Work is standardized, simplified. It's a more efficient way to make everything. Mass production sweeps the nation and it changes the world. To be an assembly line worker, you did not have to have a high degree of skill. You didn't have to be a card-carrying machinist or whatever it might be. All you had to do was to learn how to turn the same wrench on the same nut 5,000 times a day, and that was your job. Prices plummet. In 1913, a Model T cost two years' wages. By 1924, it's just three months. The Model T, without question, is one of the single objects in the history of America that changed America. What Henry Ford developed was the car for the common man. The impact of this little car is massive. 300,000 sold in 1913. By 1924, there's a new Model T every 24 seconds. Suddenly, this form of transportation, which was entirely new, was something that people could actually engage in. They could afford it. It wasn't like a spaceship where there are only several of them and there are millions and millions of dollars. America's love affair with the automobile has begun. The American has a great sense of um, freedom and not being tied to one place. If I don't like it here, I'm going to pack everything in the car. They don't require anybody's permission. They don't have to sign out. And the automobile really enables that. When I came to America, the first thing I wanted to think about, how can I get hold of a car? I had a love affair with cars from the very beginning because this method of movement that can enable you to see vast expanse of space is something I never experienced in China. Never. This is a, something I wanted to do almost more than anything else, is to buy a car. Roscoe Scheller is one of America's pioneer car dealers. Today, America drives 2.7 trillion miles a year in vehicles that are descendants of Henry Ford's Model T. Cars. By the Roaring Twenties, they are transforming the lives of millions. Now you don't have to live near work. Cities explode outwards, creating giant suburbs. Brand new highways are built. Shopping malls with giant car parks. The biggest urban sprawl of all, Los Angeles. The center of a massive entertainment industry. 800 films produced a year in the 1920s, double the amount today.